Oh yeah. Greetings Wonder, this is Atlas here and welcome to The Void. Today I'm going to be reacting and breaking down uh, a song called Light from the Netherworld from the Xenogears original soundtrack. This is a very special, very very special request because it comes from one of my uh, subscribe star supporters which is uh, Symphonic Elf and the comment says, hey I'm a big fan of your breakdowns. If you ever find the time, I would love to hear what you have to say about the track Light from the Netherworld from the PS1 game Xenogears. This plays in the game's intro sequence. As a composer myself, Yasunori Mitsuda is one of my biggest inspirations alongside Iwamatsu. Well, thank you very much for your request and, of course, your incredible support, uh, Symphonic F. Barely familiar with this uh, particular franchise because I do remember that back in the day I used to purchase uh, video game and magazines, but uh, they were catered more towards console gamers. And even though I had never had a console at the time, I wanted, I wanted a console so badly that uh, I, I just purchased the magazines to see what, what was going on, you know, in the world of, of consoles and so on and so forth. So, I, every once in a while I would see an article regarding Xenogears and I would see, you know, the, like the screenshots and the artwork and, and, and all, um, you know, those images that were included in the magazines. I think that it that has to do something with uh, Max or something like that, right? But other than that, I, I can't really say uh, what, it, what it is about. Other than that uh, vague, uh, you know, memory that I have from what I watch on those magazines. So, like 99% of the time here, I am going blind, uh, uh, basically blind into this. So, looking forward to it. Onward. Okay. We have here Light from the Netherworld. It's a pretty badass name for a song. From Sino Years. Boom. Oh. Boom. <laughs> I'm liking the introduction. Like the transition right there. Oh yeah. I love this mix in between the orchestral elements with the synthesizers 
and this very synthetic percussion that was going on before. That was very 80s. Such a shift. There we have it. Yeah, the song ends with this uh, major kind of thing, you know, that it's, it's such a contrast from the thing that we, we were previously previously listening, um, Symphonic have said that this is a song that is played at the beginning intro sequence of the, of the game, so pro it's probably like a cinematic or something like that, or an in-game cinematic of, of the game while this song is playing, and you can very, pretty, pretty much tell because of how the, the song evolves, it has very different transitions and not, not, only, not, not a lot of things repeat other than the, how they repeat in their section by themselves, but then it changes to another thing. So we're gonna see if we can take it further from there. So let's break it down. Okay, so in this case I want to talk about the different elements that we hear in this uh, particular song, uh, but more specifically in terms of of what influences you can hear regarding the sound and to which uh, a time frame we can, you know, um, to which a time frame it, it pertains. Because I would say that it has, the synthesizers are very much inspired by the 80s uh, soundtracks that you will hear uh, very much, especially in, um, in the slasher horror films, for example, uh, a good example could be like the John, John Car Carpenter, you know, plethora of soundtracks, but uh, uh, just some details here and there because uh, we can hear very large chord progressions in this particular track that are not so much present, present in those kind of um, soundtracks, but also you know, it has the 90s, uh, 90s elements, and, and it, it is a mishmash, mishmash of those two things, int which intertwined together, built 
uh, the architecture for the storytelling that is within the, the track itself. So we have also in the industrial elements from the 90s uh, themselves, uh, not so much from the 80s, but the synthesizers patches that are, are you can hear here in this track are very much from the 80s. I, I, I don't know how much of a... Um, um, of uh, subtractive synthesizers were at the time that were very much uh, used in popular music, you know, because the 80s was like the explosion of the synthesizer era. It's like the synthesizers in the 80s like ruled everything. And uh, I don't know how much uh, subtractive uh, synthesizers were so uh, as prominent, were as prominent as uh, additive synthesizers like FM synthesizers and so on and so forth. But you know that's uh, like like a whole another another thing, a whole another tangent. I don't want to go too much into that. But uh, you know, coming back to the industrial elements that I was talking about, I'm just going to make a very quick call uh, from two very specific uh, soundtracks that uh, I could use very much to, as an example, to, to set the time frame in which this uh, video game is in terms of, of which decade it is, which is of course the 90s, because the first clip that I'm going to play here is from GoldenEye. And as you could hear in that, in that clip, you can hear these percussive industrial kind of thing, elements that are very much present in this particular track also, and of course GoldenEye is a Nintendo 64 a game that was of course developed and released in the 90s. And we also have this clip from the movie The Fifth Element. Now in this clip you can hear that there's more similarities, similarities apologies, to this particular song because it's, it's more, um, it has more layers, it has more instruments and we also have the choirs uh, which in this case, in this particular song, we can hear two types of choirs which is the, the choir that sounds more like kids doing a choir that sounds very ethnic and very primitive and there is a reason behind that, which I'm going to get into later when I explain a little bit about the storytelling that might be behind the track. But we also have this second choir, which is more... Uh, it's, not, it's less tamed and it's more open and more... well, epic might, might, could be the term, you know, which is more... Uh, it has more of a resemblance to a choir a, a church choir, apologies, other, other than a choir, uh, that ethnic choir that can, we can hear in other parts of the song, which sounds like it's a choir from kids, but the, the quality and the, the dynamics on how the, they perform and the notes are very much towards an, uh, towards, uh, an ethnic no t tone, you know, because of course a, a ch the church choir um, you could say that it, uh, to a certain degree it has an ethnic uh, touch to it, but uh, it pertains to to a certain religion even, you know, like a church choir where you would think of, a, of an orthodox uh, church or, or a catholic church, which is the, the first thing that comes to mind. But the choirs from the, from the kids maybe, because uh, it sounds it sounds like it's a choir of kids. It's very ethnic. It's like uh, you could you could attribute it to you know like a Middle Eastern uh, part of, of of the world, or maybe even a little bit of the northern northern um, uh, parts of South Africa. It's not no, northern parts of South Africa. The northern parts of Africa, apologies which of course are very close to the Middle East because you know we, you have Egypt and that's very much connected to all that Middle Eastern area of Saudi Arabia, Arabia and Iraq and Iran and all those parts. So that's kind of the difference that I see in between those, those two, right? 
Okay, so now we can take all those things, all those influences, all those elements, and the composer arranges them, you know, it, he creates this, um, let, let's say, this space, but he manages to um, create, create space within that space, so it doesn't, all these elements doesn't sound like cluttered or just to jam together. So he has a very, um, he has a, a fair bit of, of the length of the song to be able to elaborate those things in the song, in the track. But um, now that I'm, I ta I'm talking about this, let's, let's get into how that translates into the potential storytelling of the track itself. So. Uh, when I finished the reaction, I was talking about the, the organic element and the, um, the synthetic element of, of the track, right? Because it has the, the strings and, and the choirs also, of course, which is a, a very much uh, biological thing that you, could, that you could hear, let's say, right? And we have this, the synthesizer and so on and so forth, which is the synthetic, synthetic apologies, the synthetic part of it. So, um, I remember that, like I, like I mentioned, the things that I can uh, remember from this video game is that we have mechs in the game. And they are potentially uh, controlled, like for example in Pacific Rim, you know, the, the mechs that you, you see there are, are contro controlled by humans inside the mech. So, potentially, this game also uh, has mechs that are controlled from within. It's not like remote control, they are controlled from within. So, and, and, you know, it's similar to the, the, the mechs in Power Rangers and so on and so forth. It's so, it's so common to see mechs uh, controlled by biological uh, species, which is, in, in, in this case, you know, us. But if you think also in science fiction, you know, you have in the in World of Worlds, the, you know, the the aliens were inside inside these uh, mammoth of vessels, you know, you have this uh, biological thing and this synthetic element intertwined, playing to, together in the track, and that translates into what could potentially be the one of the premises of the game, which is of course. Uh, humans controlling mechs uh, to whatever purpose they see fit. So, uh, you know, it, this kind of composition makes total sense. Like, uh, I'm going to get uh, these very organic elements, like choirs that has the human voice and, 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 and these orchestral elements, elements like the strings and so on and so forth, with, and I'm going to mix it up with these industrial elements, these very percussive industrial elements and, um, and the synthesizers, of course. So you mesh those two things together and you have a match made in heaven for this kind of premise, of course. Now to finalize my commentary, I would like to talk briefly about how the track evolves, which is basically, you know, you have this very foreboding uh, introduction of the song, relatively long, uh, which builds the tension, of course, it creates mystery. Then you have the development of something which is uh, some sort of a struggle in the midsection of it, and then it ends with uh, that sort of resolution. Well, it's not even a sort of resolution, the, act, the song actually has like a concise resolution, a major uh, resolution in it, and uh, it's like uh, giving you a spark of, of of hope, you know, like uh, like you're starting your journey into the game with a little bit of hope. Like maybe you went through this cinematic at the at the beginning of the game, and um, you arrive and you are ready to play the game. But it's also like uh, it it translates as the coming of the hero to save the day, so, so to speak. So. That little bit of hope in, 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 in that resolution that we hear there might be the introduction of your character, which is the hero of the story. Something like that, I would say. So yeah, I think I'm gonna give this track a golden batch. I think it was very cool. I really liked the, you know, the, 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 the coming of this boat, boat of these worlds 
uh, from the 80s decade to, uh, into the 90s decade, because of course this game was um, uh, developed in the 90s, but it borrowed things from the 80s and brought it forward to the 90s, and also all these elements that, that we can hear, all these influences that are intertwined together to play a bigger role into the story, uh, into the storytelling of, or potential the storytelling of the game. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and share it with your friend. Also, please don't forget to visit my Patreon or subscribe star in case you want to give priority to your request to be featured on the channel. Also, you can visit my coffee profile in case you want to leave a tip to support the channel and my Teespring shop where you can get merch and all that jazz. And of course, ex me Ilo, Nihil Fit.